Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to my YouTube channel. The late great Hans Rosling, a statistician and global health professor, liked to ask his audience questions before his TED Talks. And he found some interesting results. So with that in mind, I have two questions for you. Good luck. What Rosalind found was that most people get these questions wrong because they have preconceived ideas about the world. They think the world is the same as it was 50 or 20 years ago. If you ask around, you'd be surprised to find out how many people don't know the population is increasing at a decreasing rate or the extreme poverty is significantly decreasing. And there's even fewer people that can explain why that's happening. In this video, I'm going to connect economic development to something called the demographic transition model. It's going to show three different things that change over time. The birth rate, the death rate, and the total population. To give it some historical context, I'm going to focus on the U.S. and Western Europe. But remember, every country goes through this process, although some might not fit the mold, and some transition quicker than others. Okay, here we go. For thousands of years, the world looked like this. There were high birth rates with families having many children, but high death rates with many of those children never reaching adulthood. Life expectancy and living standards were low and there were no hospitals or medicine and life was just basically hunger, disease, war, and death. A lot of death. Bring out your days when and there really wasn't an economy because most of it was subsistence farming where people were growing food for themselves, not to sell. And the result was that global human population stayed relatively low for thousands of years. This is stage one of the DMT and it's the life of the vast majority of the people who've ever existed. Oh, that's depressing. But over time, people started to grow more food and that was not just for themselves, it was for other people to sell it and that created agricultural based economies. And more food means less famine and higher living standards so the death rate started to decrease. And at this point, during stage two, came the industrial revolution. Technological advancements like the widespread use of the steam engine changed what would be produced and how it would be produced. It's also when Adam Smith, the founder of modern economics, wrote about how markets and economies work and when Thomas Malthus wrote that we're all gonna die of starvation. I am inevitable. Malthus noticed that our ability to produce food grew at a linear rate, but population grew exponentially. And his logical conclusion was that eventually we're going to run out of food and people are going to starve. And the DMT shows that he was right. Kind of. Population here in stage two is increasing at an increasing rate, but industrialization brought new technologies and more productivity that led to more food production. And industrialization led to better healthcare, education, and sanitation, which decreased the death rate. But notice that the birth rate didn't really start to fall because a lot of families felt an economic need to have more kids to farm the land, and they didn't realize that a lot of their children are actually gonna reach adulthood. In other words, they didn't know that the death rate was falling, so they continue to have a lot of kids. And as economies industrialized, people moved from rural to urban areas, from farms to factories. This means that a lot of families didn't have either the room or the necessity for a lot of kids, and so the birth rate started to fall. This is stage three when the population is increasing but at a decreasing rate because the fertility rate has fallen and people are having less kids. And advancements in production and trade led to higher living standards and a decrease in extreme poverty. This is the world of industrialized countries. Now here in stage four we have post-industrial economies where the focus isn't on manufacturing, it's on service industries like finance, insurance and healthcare. Birth rates and death rates are low, so there's zero population growth and life expectancy, gender equality, and living standards are the highest they've ever been in the history of the world. Whoa. Now up to this point, I've been talking about Western industrialized countries, but this process is happening all over the world. Every country is at a different stage of development. You can see that in their demographics. Right now, there's really no countries that are in stage one, but there are some countries that are in stage two. These countries have underdeveloped economies. So they have high birth rates and high death rates and population growth that's exponential. These are countries like Angola, the Sudan, and Guatemala. And other countries like India and Mexico are already at stage three, where people have already moved into factories, and they have falling birth rates, and they have higher standards of living. And countries like China and Canada and the United States are at stage four with very little population growth. And there's also a theoretical stage five with countries like Germany and Japan where the population is actually falling. Okay. 
Okay, so well, who cares? You do, because it's important to understand economic development so you don't have preconceived ideas about the world. But there's so much crap written and said about population growth. There's people out there that are pushing the government to do things to limit population growth, but the DMT shows that population is gonna level off anyway. It's gonna cap out at around 10 or 11 billion sometime in the next 50 years. But that creates a whole set of new problems. Right now, the richest 10% of humans account for about 50% of the world's CO2 emissions. As more and more countries develop, the people are gonna want more things, and that's likely gonna put a strain on our resources and the environment. And if you think about it that way, the problem isn't are there too many people, it might be are there too many rich people. But that is a whole nother video. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you're a student in economics or a human geography class, take a look at the ultimate review packet. It's gonna help you learn and study and practice. Please subscribe and let me know in the comments if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.